Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I think I'm a minute early. Nope, we're right on time. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa ala amma ba'd. Jazakumullahu khayran for tuning in now or watching this later. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the understanding of the Qur'an. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who act upon this noble message of the Qur'an. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us success in this world and on the Day of Judgment. My dear friends, I was inspired by you throughout the month of Ramadan after recording short messages uh, pertaining to the Holy Qur'an to inshallah record the tafsir of the entire Qur'an. I know this task sounds mammoth. It is crazy to do. But let us try our best to get through understanding the entirety of the Qur'an in a manner which befits our context, in a manner which brings about contentment to our hearts, in a manner which makes us closer to Rabbul Alameen, our Lord, the Lord of the Universe, and in a manner which inshallah proves to be our safety and our success in the, on the Day of Judgment and our entrance into Jannah. We've elaborated upon what the Qur'an is prior to the month of Ramadan. This is a book which will guide you. It will give you comfort at heart. It teaches you your purpose in life. It teaches you the purpose of the coming of the messengers of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, you know, sallallahu alayhim. May Allah grant peace and blessings to all of them. Especially our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who brought us the final message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Qur'an. We elaborated upon uh, how the Qur'an shows us different glimpses of accountability to prepare us for the ultimate accountability. We elaborated upon the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being a benefit to humanity and not vice versa. The Qur'an will never ever encompass anything which goes against human morals. Nor will the living tradition of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well. This is hudan lil muttaqin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasizes this in the beginning of the second surah of the Holy Qur'an, Surah Al-Baqarah. ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ so inshallah, from today I'm going to reflect upon a detailed message of the Qur'an so we can really understand what this book is all about. Before I even commence with explaining Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, there is a question that some people ask pertaining to Surah, Surah Al-Fatiha, Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Imran, or Surah Al-Nas, Surah Al-Ikhlas. Where did we come up with this? Why did we name, you know, give this title of surah in the beginning of different chapters of the Holy Quran? So subhanAllah, to our surprise, when we actually read the Quran, we find that the word surah is written in the Quran about six times. And this is other than the heading and the titles which encompasses the word surah. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, in the commencement, in the beginning of Surah Al-Nur, Allah says, Surah Al-Anzalnaaha wa Faradnaaha wa Anzalna ila akhir al-ayah. Allah says, this is a surah that we descended, that we sent to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Or, for example, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in the 11th juz of the Holy Quran, وَإِذَا مَا when any surah is revealed, they look at each other. This is talking about the hypocrites, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says with regards to you know the challenge that people made that we can you know produce a book like the Quran. Allah said, Fatu bi suratim min mithla. Bring a surah like that which encompasses which is encompassed in the Quran. So this concept of something being a surah, for example, the commencing chapter being called a chapter, this is not from us, rather it's from the Qur'an itself. So I, be, I, I said uh, the word surah is mentioned about six times 
in the Quran, if I'm not mistaken. The word surah, what does it mean? What, what, what does it come from in the Arabic language? So in the Arabic language, when something is at a high level, or when something encompasses a high message, or when something is at an elevated status, it is called surah. So a surah to rafi'ah would mean an elevated status. Or, uh, as it said, a, 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 a surah al-manzila to rafi'ah. Surah is an elevated platform. So why does the Quran, why is the Quran uh, put? Why does the Quran put the, the word surah before an actual surah? This is to show that this surah or this chapter is very encompassing, right? The meaning and the messages that are consistent with in this chapter are very elevated. And this applies to, of course, every single chapter of the Holy Quran. Surah is also uh, in reference to the beginning or ending of a month. So as we see, you know, there is a number of ayat which in which talk about a certain message and then they are concluded or they are encompassed from within a beginning of that chapter and the end of that chapter. And hence, this also applies in one way where we see the beginning of a month and an ending of the month. We see this uh, system taking place in the Quran as well. And of course, the first surah of the Holy Quran is Surah Al-Fatiha. We recite this surah in every rak'at of our salah. In fact, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says in a hadith, "La salata liman lam yaqra' bi Fatiha al-Kitab." There is no salah for anybody who does not include Surah al-Fatiha in their salah. Meaning, this surah needs to be a part of your salah. It needs to be a moment of reflection in your salah. If it's not, then such a salah, according to many scholars, I would say the majority is invalid. Imam Abu Hanifa, on the other hand, rahimahullah says that salah is still accepted but with deficiency. And he has proofs uh, on why he says that. This surah has many names which are mentioned in the books of tafsir, the books of hadith. Uh, in fact, the ulama have counted about 26 names for this surah, Surah Al Fatiha. And inshallah, I'll go through just some of them. I won't go through all 26. So of course, the first name of the surah that we'll focus on is the, the name that we commonly call it with, Surah Al-Fatiha. Al-Fatiha, basically the commencing surah. So why is this surah called Al-Fatiha? The Sahaba anhum have known this surah to be Al-Fatiha. The Prophet Wasallam has called Surah Al-Fatiha Al-Fatiha as well. Al-Fatiha means the commencing or the commencement. So, of course, at a uh, visual perspective, the Quran commences with the surah, surah al-Fatiha. Right? It is the beginning of the, the Quran. Right? From there, it follows other chapters. Another reason why the surah is called Surah al-Fatiha is because we commence our salah with it. Yes, we read the thana, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik wa ta'a. We recite this, and uh, some uh, of our brothers and sisters recite the other dua that is proved from the Prophet Wasallam's practice, his living tradition and his sunnah, which is inni uh, But right after this, the recitation that is commenced uh, in the in the salah is with Surah Al Fatiha. So in a sense, Surah Al-Fatiha opens up our salah as well. So it's called Al-Fatiha. Some narrations have mentioned that, yes, the, the apparent first narration upon, the fir, uh, apparent first revelation upon Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was Surah Al-Qalam. اِقْرَأْ بِاسْمِ رَبِّكَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ عَلَقَ The first five verses. But the first surah, to be revealed from Al-Lawhul Mahfuz, which is the preserved tablet, to the first sky, was Surah Al-Fatiha. And hence, in that sense, it is the commencement of revelation, right? The first surah to be revealed. 
The surah is also called Ash-Shifa because it has been mentioned in certain narrations that when there was an ailment that uh, people were uh, afflicted with, certain Sahaba radiallahu recited upon them Surah Al-Fatiha and they were cured. So once again, I would really highly emphasize that the Quran is a cure. But is it a cure for all your physical ailments? It could be, but it is not a definite. It is definitely a cure for shifa'un lima fi sudur. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarifies in the Quran, it is a definite shifa for your uh, misguidance. It is a definite shifa for your spiritual ailments. So this surah has also called, been called uh, shifa. This surah has also been called alhamd. Can you guess why? Because Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen The word Alhamd which, it, which means all praises um, are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala This word has been encompassed in this surah This word is in this surah So just as say you know other surahs give uh, you know the, uh, uh, say other surahs in the Holy Quran take a name of themselves for a single word in that surah in the same way Surah Al-Fatiha could be called Surah Al-Hamd because it encompasses the word Alhamdu in the surah so for example Surah Al-Alaq is called Surah Al-Alaq because there is the word Alaq in it Surah Abi Lahab has the word Abu Lahab in it hence it's called Surah Abu uh, Abi Lahab Surah Al-Baqarah has the word Baqarah in it in the same way Surah Al-Fatiha has the word Alhamd in it, so it could be called Surah Alhamd as well. SubhanAllah, this fourth name that I'm focusing on is a very, very important name. The Surah is also called Ummul Quran, the mother of the Quran. Why? Because the entire message of the Quran, the entire message that the Quran reflects upon, is included in the surah of the holy quran is there present in this you know talking about the tawheed the oneness of one allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the reckoning allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about it you know uh, uh, in terms of turning to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is a theme repeated in the holy quran this is also uh, present in it faith you know the faith of various nations and various people this is encompassed in the Holy Quran. So the revolving themes around the Holy Quran, which are present in every other surah, is present in this one surah. So basically you can say that Surah Al-Fatiha gives you an introductory message for what is to come throughout the recitation of the Holy Quran. This surah has also been called Sab'ul Mathani, the seven firm verses. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in an authentic hadith that such a surah has been revealed upon me which was not revealed in any scripture before, <coughs> neither the Torah nor the Injil. And this is Surah Al Fatih. He is Sab'ul Mathani wal Quran al Azim. These are seven powerful verses and it is. Uh, in essence, Al Quran Al Azim, the Quran in itself. Why? Because it gives you the message of what the Quran is going to talk about. This surah has also been called a dua because it, it is, it, it, not only does it show you the format of reaching out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, connecting with your Maker, not only does it show you that format, but it, is, it in itself is a dua. <coughs> So many people ask, can I make a dua while I'm standing in salah? You are making the best of duas. Allah is showing you the format of making dua through Surah Al-Fatiha. You praise Allah, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praises are for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the Lord of the Universe. I'm not going to get into the translation today, but when we get into the translation, you will see how perfect of a dua this is. You're asking Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for for all goodness. <clears throat> this surah has also been called al wafiyah a word that I love to use, the encompassing surah. 
And once again, because uh, it has the core messages included in it, it's called Al-Wafiya. Al-Kafiya. What? You know, when they ask you in the English language, what more do you want? Al-Kafiya is the sufficient one. You, re re you recite this surah, and according to some narrations, I believe uh, Allama Razi has mentioned that you get the reward of reciting the entire Quran. But yes, you know, this is just a virtue that is attached to reciting Surah Al-Fatiha. It can never ever physically be equivalent to reciting the entire Quran. So once again, I emphasize that we should make uh, the Quran, the recitation of the Quran, a part of our wird, our daily supplications are our, our daily virtuous deeds that we do. This surah has also been called a salah right? There's a hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentions, the hadith that I mentioned, la salata bi fatihatin illa bi fatihatin kitab. There's no salah without uh, surah al-Fatiha. So this surah has also been called uh, uh, salah right? This the uh, devotional prayer, one should say, or the ritual prayer. This surah has also been called as sual asking, the beseeching. In this surah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for goodness. We ask, we, we tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a nice devotional way that we worship only you. Right? Not only do we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for just mere guidance, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the best of guidance in the surah. Sirat al ladina and amta alayhim. Guide us to the path upon, uh, the, the, guide us upon such a path like the path of those who you favor. Right? In another place of the Quran, as we'll inshallah uh, talk about it, Allah says, Sirat al ladina and amta alayhim, min al nabiyyina wa siddiqina wa shuhadai wa salihin. The guidance of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The guidance of those who gave their lives to preserve the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The guidance of the, those who spoke the truth. The guidance of the pious people. Ya Allah, guide, grant us this guidance. So this surah is also called as sual So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the ability to understand that this surah al-Fatiha is a great commencement and it is a means of our eternal success and our most firm, special guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, we'll carry on with the message tomorrow. So I hope you understood where Surah came from. I hope you understood the various names of Surah Al-Fatiha. I hope you understood why Surah Al-Fatiha is in the beginning of the Quran and what, it's, what is its beautiful significance. And I hope you continue on pondering upon the Quran at your own personal level. Until next time, wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And the reason why I called this, you know, um, these sessions a beautiful word is because I couldn't think of another more sophisticated name than that, right? And it is simply the beautiful word, wassalamu alaykum.